So networks in the Americas are, are led by the CEOs of Canary in Canada, Jim Gaban, Internet Tool in the United States of America, and Luis Elisa Cadenas from Red Clara that interconnects all the NRANs in Latin America. Uh, let's start with let's start with the question, uh, gentlemen. Um, so uh, I'm going to uh, send the first question, and I think Jim is going to catch this up. These research and education networks are super different uh, in so many ways. How do you leverage the trends of each organization to support research and education communities across the Americas? It's a, it's a great question, uh, Maria Jose. Uh, first, hola, uh, bonjour, and hi to everyone. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's, naturally, it's naturally a human thing to, to study differences and try to understand differences. And we definitely have differences. We have differences in how we're structured. We're different in terms of uh, our funding models and our roles based on how we're funded, as well as our accountabilities. Um, but you just saw a, a very powerful message in terms of the need for global collaboration in, in astronomy. Uh, but that, that need also exists on other critical items of humanity like climate change, uh, food and water supply, uh, dealing with chronic illnesses. And so being part of a, of a global organization enabling that um, is something that we all have in common. And, and it's, it's that piece that is, is in common that's probably much greater than where we are different. And it's probably worth maybe talking about how we leverage that um, how we leverage that is first and foremost, um, recognizing that we're all dependent on each other, that you know, the global network requires uh, a loose federation, probably more accurately a confederation uh, of organizations that come together to support um, global science, global research, uh, global education. And uh, that, that that will come in, in, in all kinds of forms in terms of uh, driven by uh, political agendas or government priorities or researcher priorities. Uh, and and rather, than, rather than fight the differences, actually embrace the differences, recognizing that, that diversity is a, is a good thing. We can, we can learn from each other. We can see what's worked in one area and, and uh, apply that what hasn't worked in other areas and avoid that if we can. Um, and I'll go quickly here because I could speak about this for uh, quite, a, quite a while. I'm quite passionate about what we do here at Canary as are the other two presidents. But I'll, I'll summarize by saying, you know, what's important for the global community is, and I don't mean the, the global research and education networking community, it's what's important for the people that take advantage of that is that within the community that we operate, where we're offering uh, connectivity as well as advanced services and identity management and cybersecurity and connecting people, that we, we recognize the dependency we have on each other. We embrace that dependency. We recognize the diversity. We take advantage of that diversity. And through events like we're having today, uh, maximizing inclusion in, in a very democratic way. So ultimately, we, we, we want to ensure a takeaway from for the group here today is to understand that dependency, diversity, and democracy are critical in, in a confederated system to support the challenges of humanity. Thank you, Jim. Uh, would you like to add something, Luis Howard? I, I echo what Jim said. I think uh, if you look across the, the NRANs around the world, uh, our, we have far more in common than I think we actually have uh, different uh, funding models and, and, and uh, you know, governance models aside. I think we all share the, the same common goals and uh, have you know, continued to work together to achieve them. Uh, and I, I, I will add something, uh, Maria Jose, if you let me. First yes, of all, I, I am very grateful with my, my dear friends, uh, Howard and Jim, uh, for this uh, goodwill to cooperate and collaborate 
uh, which is something as as uh, as Jean mentioned, it is in the DNA of the networks of the research and education networks uh, globally. Actually, we have much more things in common than differences, and the most important, from my point of view, is a widespread and shared practice between these types of network to collaborate in search of the of the common good. A very important point of view uh, in my in my thought for a world that is debating today in the false paradox of the individual interest versus the collective goals. No? So I think uh, this, uh, this meeting and the opportunity we are uh, uh, having today and, and the collaboration we are expecting to grow soon, much more is something that shows the kind of uh, humanity we want to have in the future. Absolutely. Uh, I'm gonna continue, Howard. How does this collaboration impact research and education communities in your jurisdiction? Uh, no, great question. So, you know, I look, the way I look at it is, you know, every NRAN plays this very important role, uh, providing their community with access to resources, data, and collaborations around the world. And the model for that has been through federations or confederations, as, as you mentioned. And you think about the, the, the network itself is a federation of networks, a, a network of networks, the Identity and Access Management Federation that uh, we deploy broadly uh, is key to enabling both you know, domestic and global collaborations. And Edgerome, the Edgerome Federation, you know, provides sort of seamless access to visiting researchers. Of course, that was back when people actually traveled and visited each other. We hope we get back there soon. Uh, so from my perspective, you know, my community is best served when those federations are vibrant and, and far reaching. In other words, you know, the more resources, data and co collaborators that every participant in a federation has, the better it is for all the other participants in the federation. And, and um, you know, awareness sort of locally and, and regionally about all these amazing capabilities, many of the things that we great presentations just saw today, as part of achieving that goal and working with us, you know, friends and neighbors uh, uh, on a focused effort to raise awareness of, of that in the Americas, I think is a very valuable and important next step. Uh, certainly our proximity in, in space and time uh, makes it a bit easier uh, for these types of collaborations. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, we'll, we'll, as we have more of these, I think we'll 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 even make farther progress uh, in in um, demonstrating how important uh, these capabilities are to, as Jim said and Louis said, the the not just the specific R and E communities, uh, but all the people that benefit from the research and education efforts. Good, uh, Luis, Jim, would you like to add something? Well, I think I think I think to Howard's point. I mean, the globe is rather large. Um, we can we can rather than try to take on the whole globe. I think the three of us have agreed that uh, for our little corner of it, which is uh, largely all in the same time zone, it's uh, we, we can we can probably advance things a lot quicker and faster. But also to be a model for just just like we talked about from a diversity perspective and the global perspective, there's also diversity, and they can hopefully learn from. What we've done to sort of get a better alignment within the Americas, because let's let's not forget that the North and South America are separated by two very large oceans, but we're, but are connected North and South. So hopefully through the work we're doing, we can also provide some leadership in in the global community. Thank you, Jim. And Luis, tell me what is next for the America Sunrise? What are oh, we going to do? It's a wonderful a wonderful question. Well, I, I think, first of all, I would like to mention that uh, we are in front of, of great challenges we are facing as humanity. And, and it requires everyone effort to, to try to solve them. No? COVID-19 showed us very, very clearly that no one is safe if we are not all safe. Uh, in this enormous collective effort, uh, science is indispensable, and our research and education networks a way of intensifying, expanding our capacity uh, to produce knowledge and make it available to, to humanity. Not for nothing does the United, United Nations Organization 
recognize the fundamental role of cooperation in the last of its sustainable uh, development goals. I think that Canary, Internet2, and Red Clara, uh, we share this common vision and, and the, necess the, ne the necessary trust between our organization to be able to advance and extrain uh, these actions. Uh, the digital infrastructures that we offer and the capacity that we have to promote an active circulation of scientific uh, communities is something that we hope to make available to, to research groups throughout the, the continent. I would like to, to share uh, some examples uh, that I can offer beside the astronomical example that we look at today uh, from existing collaborations that shows uh, this potential. No? In the field of climate change, for example, uh, is, it, it is the all Atlantic uh, research area, uh, which is the result of science diplomacy for involving countries from both sides of the Atlantic Ocean, which aims at enhancing marine research and innovation uh, cooperation along any uh, and across the Atlantic Ocean, no? from, from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Uh, and, and you will ask uh, yourself, why is an alliance like this necessary? As stated by the initiative itself, the Atlantic Ocean uh, is an invaluable resource shared by all Atlantic nations and beyond. It requires effective cooperation in marine research and innovation to best unlock its secrets and to manage human activities that depend on it in a sustainable way. The All Atlantic Ocean Research Alliance intends to advance the shared vision of an Atlantic Ocean that is healthy, resilient, clean, safe, transparent, predictable, productive, understood, and treasured so as to promote the well being, prosperity, and security of present and future generations. I would like to finish with just another example is in the, in the area of health, which has affected us uh, so much recently. Uh, the World Health Organization has promoted the, the One Health approach, no? which integrates uh, One Health as a collabor collaborative, multisectoral and transdisciplinary approach, working at the local, the regional, national and global levels, and the looking for achieving optimal health outcomes by recognizing the interconnection between people, animals, plants, and their shared uh, environment. Our organizations have the capacity to um, extrain collaborations with this approach since they integrate the local to the global thanks to the 11 research networks that make up Reclara currently covering 11 countries in South America, as well as the networks and connections provided by Canary and, and Internet too. So what we propose as the next steps is to strengthen these articulation capacities between us to better connect our research capacities made up of scientists and infrastructures to these great global challenges. All these challenges require all of our capacity the scientific data and computing capabilities that we provide are essential for this task. Uh, but above all that, I think our ability to collaborate and to weep the threats that help us safeguard the Earth. Our little spaceship that has uh, cared for us and sustained us for so long. So I think the, 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 the more important aspect of this uh, of this activity is that we are beginning a, um, a path where we are going to put uh, the capacities we have at the services of our communities in, in Americas, but also integrating, integrating them in a local, in a global science uh, challenge that we are facing uh, uh, already. So I will oh, say yes, that. we are. <laughs> Any final thoughts you would like to share with us? Any of you, Howard, Jim, Chris? Uh, you know, I would say um, one thing I think we heard very strongly today uh, is uh, to solve and to address, you know, these problems, not just the problems that are facing us now and in the future, but also, you know, further the advancement of knowledge and understanding of the universe and, and ourselves at the end. 
uh, not only do we need, you know, people need more technology and resources, but fundamentally we need more minds <laughs> that are empowered and capable and enabled to work on these problems. And a lot of those minds, many of those minds have uh, are at or, or in uh, traditionally underserved communities. And I think one of the things that we all continue to struggle with and look for ways to address um, is how do we be inclusive of those underserved communities? And uh, um, because we need those minds <laughs> to work on these problems. Yeah, we certainly do. Well, um, I would like to thank you very much, gentlemen, for your contributions. We are certainly eager to enhance collaboration through our networks and within the entire Latin, uh, American continent. Sorry for this Latin. Um, thank you very much.